the, the topic of my presentation is perhaps uh, a little drier than the shipping in Singapore's uh, maritime uh, industry clusters. I'd like to talk on the legal aspects of environmental management in the South China Sea. Uh, this is a paper which I co-authored with uh, Dr. Shannon Lexman, uh, formerly from the National University of Singapore. She's presently a full-time housewife. So the only questions you have, you can email to her. I'm sure she'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, she's the real lawyer in this presentation. I'm the ecologist who hung around the lawyers uh, who uh, do the analysis. Um, a bit of uh, outline of the presentation, I'll uh, introduce um, why we have to have a legal framework for environmental protection in the South China Sea. A bit of background on the work that uh, the seven or eight lawyers and one ecologist uh, did uh, over the last eight years from 2001-2008 to review the uh, uh, existing legal framework for environmental management in the South China Sea littorals and also the methodology that was applied. Uh, I will be quite brief on the methodology because it's a fairly straight, straightforward uh, approach. Um, I will present you the findings and the conclusions of our work uh, and some of the recommendations made. Uh, by way of introduction, I'm sure you are quite familiar with the importance of the South China Sea in terms of ecology, uh, environment, and also in terms of resources. Uh, we heard uh, from uh, Nazvi and also from Hans, the significance of the South China Sea to the economics of the region, but from an environmental standpoint, the South China Sea is very important because uh, the bulk of fisheries in Southeast Asia is actually uh, landed from the South China Sea. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the countries around the South China Sea actually has a fairly large uh, share of the world prawn or shrimp market as well. Uh, more than 50% of the world shrimp uh, actually is also landed from the South China Sea. So if you want to form a shrimp cartel, like the oil cartel, actually the South China Sea countries can do so, provided we can agree on uh, terminologies, uh, on the terms of the uh, business endeavor. In terms of ecosystems, uh, Nazri mentioned the uh, coral triangle. In fact, uh, the ecosystems in the South China Sea go beyond corals. Uh, corals, of course, are very glamorous, they are very colourful and so on, but you also have uh, ecosystems such as the seagrass uh, on your right hand side, which is uh, basically uh, a grass that grows underwater. Uh, but very important in terms of uh, ecosystems, uh, breeding grounds for fisheries and also for traditional medicine. Uh, and at the end of the day, I think we are also looking at uh, pro protecting the human uh, population of the South China Sea and uh, its humanity. So very important that we ensure these uh, ecosystems, resources are protected uh, in order to uh, achieve sustainability. <coughs> um, Realising uh, the fact that the ecosystems in the South China Sea uh, are being degraded and there has also been a, a steady decline in the fisheries resources. The uh, countries around the South China Sea decided to, uh, with the help of the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, uh, establish a program with a very long title. The, pro the, the project is called Reversing Environmental Degradation Trends in the South China Sea. Uh, this uh, project is, uh, uh, comprises rather of several components. There is the ecosystems component, uh, there is also the fisheries resource component, uh, there is also a component that looks at land-based pollution, uh, because as you are uh, probably aware, many of the countries around the South China Sea region uh, lacks uh, basic uh, uh, land-based pollution control um, uh, infrastructure. Sewerage uh, facilities or sewage treatment plants are practically non-existent in many countries in the South China Sea. So there was also a component that looked at uh, land-based pollution. Uh, my uh, involvement is in the project is actually in one of the uh, task forces. There were two task forces established. One uh, task force on economics, which basically looks at uh, the economic contribution of the ecosystems to the uh, South China Sea countries. 
Uh, they also looked at uh, the notion of valuing the resources in the South China Sea, giving uh, monetary value to the mangroves, to the seagrass, to the coral reefs, and so on. Uh, I was involved in a rather more boring uh, subject uh, on uh, legal matters. We had the, uh, we were given the objective or the terms of reference to review uh, the legal system uh, in the South China Sea, both at the national and at the regional level. So our task was very uh, specific uh, to examine uh, what the countries have in terms of national laws and what the region has in terms of uh, a regional instrument, a uh, very specific uh, assignment and also a very uh, specific deadline. Uh, but eventually we spent eight years looking at the subject. Uh, and Hans mentioned the subject of pair. Uh, if you see the guy in the middle, that was me, and when we started, I had more hair and also more uh, dark hair than gray hair. So. <laughs> um, a bit on the methodology, as I was saying, we have a very specific terms of reference. One is to, do, to review the national legal framework and practices. Uh, second, uh, to review national implementation of obligations under international treaties. We, uh, I guess being responsible international uh, citizens, the countries in the South China Sea are also uh, members of many uh, international conventions, uh, obviously. Uh, there was a need to also look at whether we are uh, implementing these uh, conventions that we have ratified. Uh, thirdly, uh, this is where uh, Dr. Lexman came in. Uh, we were also given the task of analysing the development of uh, international environmental treaties in the hope that perhaps in the South China Sea, um, given the lack of, uh, of uh, legal history in the region, we can come up with an innovation that, that can help uh, manage the uh, region's marine environment, uh, which was the last point in the methodological uh, approach that the group uh, undertook. <coughs> uh, I should mention that this is not an academic exercise, although the uh, approach was academic, I guess, but the idea is to have a more practical uh, tool at the end of the day that the countries can uh, implement. So four uh, terms of reference or methodology, if you, if you wish. Um, some of the findings um, in relation to the terms of reference. Um, or I should note that uh, Brunei is not uh, involved in this project for some strange reasons, which we were never fully aware of. The government of Brunei decided not to uh, uh, participate in the, the South China Sea project. Uh, although now that you have uh, an additional 17,000 square kilometers of maritime space, uh, you know, in hindsight, perhaps it would have been a good idea to, to get involved. Uh, and I won't go into the subject of that 17,000 square kilometers of uh, new.